for the first presenter uh, outside Hidax, and I'm very happy to have Matthias Brokop here. I know him now for more than 10 years, as we found out yesterday. And uh, he received a diploma in physics and got his PhD at the Humboldt University in Berlin. And in 1991, he joined the BAM, the Bundesanstalt für Materialwissenschaften in Berlin, the Surface Analysis Laboratory. And as long as I know him, he is application and his main interest is really in electron and X-ray spectroscopy. And since 2001, until his retirement from the BIM in 2008, he developed and tested, in cooperation with the EFG, the Institute for Gerätebau in Berlin, the X-ray source, the IMOX for SEMs. Nowadays, he is still working as a product specialist at the EFG. And another interesting thing is what they also produce at EFG, and I think that is what he will present us a little bit more in detail. And yeah. I'm very happy to listen to your talk. Thank you for this kind uh, introduction and also for inviting me to give you this talk. It was already said that um, we have in principle two types of um, WDS. Um, the one is the focusing um, WDS which we find in the microprobes and that's also available for the scanning electron microscopes as microspec or now with the Oxford Inca wave and the alternative construction is the so-called parallel beam uh, WDS uh, main, the, main, well, the basic idea was as already mentioned uh, to have a large collection angle um, to compensate the low beam currents we have in the scanning electron microscope. And <coughs> I think it started, uh, was started by parallax with the lambda spec, and um, the current products are the EDUX, LEX, and TIX. And from Thermo, we have the IVEX, MAX ray, and now Magna ray. And this year, also, Bruco introduced uh, such a parallel beam spectrometer for scanning electron microscopes. And it's already highlighted here in red. A key element is the X-ray optics, as it was already mentioned. And the outline of my talk will be to tell you a little bit more about the X-ray optics, as was said in the presentation before. And um, in the second part, I will focus on the application of uh, these uh, optics in the parallel beam uh, WDS, how the properties of the optics influence resolution, transmission, and <coughs> finally I will give you um, a small tip of what could you do um, as a recommendation, uh, as a performance check to see all this, the properties of your um, WDS in the lab. So, let's start with the first point. So, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, different types of X-ray optics on the market for different applications, polycapillaries, <coughs> monocapillaries, sun blades, uh, X-ray mirrors, and um, there are special uh, journals and special conferences and would be possible to speak here all the day about X-ray optics. And of course, to have focus only on the first point a little bit about polycapillaries. There are different types of these uh, polycapillary optics. The first um, is a full lens. This means we have a point source and focus the X-rays uh, by means this optics against <coughs> to a focus. And our company uh, offers uh, three types. Types, large lens, mini lens, micro lens. So you see that it depends on the dimensions. And uh, such um, types of optics you will find in the, uh, for micro XRF uh, <coughs> instruments, for instance, the EDUX Eagle and Orbis probe, or uh, the, uh, from, 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 our, from our company, uh, so called IMOX, that is a micro focus X ray um, source. And 
perhaps interesting for you too, because I think most of you are working with the SEM. Uh, it's possible to uh, use um, a small uh, focus X-ray tube and to <coughs> image the point of emission in the tube to the specimen using such an X-ray optics. This is in this case a large lens. The length of such an optics is about uh, 30 centimeters. That's a huge uh, optics because the tube is of course mounted outside the specimen chamber and we have to <coughs> we have a large distance between these two spots here. The <coughs> Okay, next, next type, I think it's the most interesting type here in this uh, workshop, is the polycapillary half lens. We have a spot source and our aim is to get as the output a parallel beam and the, as is written here, the application for this type of um, optics is the WDS, so a parallel beam um, uh, spectrometer. So the typical data for uh, such um, optics you can see here. We have an uh, input focal length of about 30 millimeters. So like the lens length itself is also uh, 30 millimeters. Diameters here about 7 millimeter. Input and output 10. I have here with me uh, such an optics. I will give it <laughs> so you can look. I think it's maybe for most of you for the first time you can see the optics you have here on your parallel beam spectrometer. Also, it is <coughs> naked. Normally, it is housed in a, in a metal housing, so this is a poor glass. These are thousands of polycapillaries. Please. Let the bo box close, and I will. <laughs> this glass. <laughs> so, so and I would be glad to have it at the end uh, of the workshop again on my uh, desk. <laughs> so, as I said, the main application is in the parallel beam spectrometer, and Michaela already uh, explains the principle. This is a a transparency from an other company. Uh, you see, here, this is from Thermod. Uh, with such an instrument, I uh, got my personal experience with a parallel beam spectrometer. So <laughs> I used this also for several years since the BEN. <coughs> so, in such types, this is so called collimating polycapillary, <coughs> with the aim to <coughs> Have <coughs> collimated beams, maybe in the direction of the detector or so. This looks more or less simple, it's not so hard to manufacture. And applications you will find in an X ray microscopy and also in X ray fluorescence instruments. So, this is about the types. Now, a little bit about the working principle it was already mentioned the differences in the uh, refraction index. We have for uh, we have always, uh, this, uh, the principle is that um, electromagnetic waves are diffracted towards the medium with a larger refraction index. And for X-rays, uh, the diffraction, in diffraction index becomes a little bit smaller than one. Difference is very small. Um, you can write the <coughs> refraction index N equals one minus a delta, and this delta is, in the, is 10 to the ninth or to the sixth power. <coughs> so it's very, very small. Nevertheless, we have in this way, if you uh, this in, the, in the capillary, it's a vacuum, and here is a glass, we have a refraction towards the vacuum. And this means the X rays are guided through total refraction through such a capillary. I have here <coughs> a plot of the <coughs> uh, reflectivity in SiO2 as a main component of the glass, of course, and you see what already said in the presentation before: um, the higher the photon energy, uh, the lower <coughs> becomes this reflectivity at high energy. So the green uh, this depends on the angle of uh, incidence. 
for one degree, <coughs> uh, we have the green curve. This <coughs> means we have a total refraction you know, only up to 2,000 uh, electron volt photon energy. So if we in reduce the angle of incidence, we shift uh, this <coughs> drop to higher energies and for 0.1 degree, we have then nearly a total refraction. So once more, the higher the photon energy, the lower the angle of our total refraction. <coughs> this is very important thing. I like, will be uh, will come back to this. So now a little bit about manufacturing. Um, the starting point, the starting materials are simple glass tubes. Of course, a special glass is a secret, of course. <laughs> So, and these are uh, glass tubes about uh, 25 millimeters in diameter, about uh, one meter in length. And uh, these tubes are stretched and cut it again, and, uh, and then uh, bundles are from all these lower tubes are made, and they are again stretched. And so we have a repeated stretching and bundle uh, formation. <coughs> until we have uh, thousands of such capillaries uh, which uh, forms uh, this so-called prey form. So then when a customer comes and wants uh, a special uh, optics, <coughs> the last step, one of the last steps I would say, comes uh, that the, 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 these uh, prey forms then are again stretched but with variable speed and temperature so that we uh, receives the lens shape and um, then the next step is of course we are from the, the stretching you have a seed and you have to cut and that is, it must be very very careful uh, then this cutting of the um, uh, glasses and of the stretched material and finally um, the optics are measured uh, in our company so that each individual optics gets a special certificate. It is the glass is glass. So you have not uh, one optics exactly with the same properties as the other one. So, so, so it is really you have a, a certain range of properties. But if you really want to have exact the properties of these optics, you have to check and to measure the properties of these individual optics. <coughs> it's not so easy, and. Therefore, also the prices are not too low. <laughs> <laughs> so here, these, these are um, a picture of these different uh, optics. In this case, these are full lenses. And if you look from the front side, I hope you can see this also from the back and this from the floor here. You we know, see these thousands of uh, capillaries, and if we increase the magnification. You look uh, in, in the size and the, the, the diameter of the uh, capillaries uh, depends, um, of course, on the application and uh, ranges, uh, say, in the <coughs> micrometer range. So this here, I don't see. This is a, <coughs> what is I have to look here. <coughs> the marker. I think you cannot see the marker from this to this, about 100 microns in this case. Of course, the diameter is also changing within the capillary. So, <clears throat> next, about application in the parallel beam, uh, WDS. It's <coughs> obviously that the any output divergence has a influence of the resolution you can achieve with a parallel beam spectrometer. Um, I'm also free here to give the specifications. Maybe you will I think it could be shown because it's a HITAX workshop. So <laughs> requirement for uh, manufacturers of uh, such type of optics are uh, 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 at least less one degree zero. You see point uh, two three for <coughs> the copper K alpha line and here for a range of silicon uh, point three. So it is not so easy to fulfill for the manufacturers of say, optics. <coughs> and of course, uh, it's also for me 
point of discussion because if you insert the uh, uh, optics in the spectrometer, of course, not just the, the evenness of diffractor elements also will influence the, the uh, resolution that can be achieved by the spectrometer. So we have always two points. And, and similar it is with the transmission. Uh, transmission should be uh, about uh, 26 uh, percent at the Kapake Alva and at lower energies even higher. And of course, reflectivity of the diffractor elements will also uh, influence the sensitivity. So, <coughs> so from the from the spectrometer properties, it's not so easy to uh, derive the properties of the optics. So I think even more it's necessary of a special characterization of the optic in a special uh, <coughs> instrumentation. So I will, sh to give you an impression, um, uh, so I will show here the results of an experiment I did recently. I put it uh, such an optics as you can see now in front of my scene and, and, and uh, scanned over this area here <coughs> and measured the spectrum of a specimen with a lot of um, <coughs> elements inside, for instance, also manganese. And <coughs> so when the electron beam um, is outside of the um, acceptance area of the optics, uh, you will see nothing in the EDS, uh, but uh, if the beam is in the center and uh, the extra is can penetrate to the optics to the uh, ceilings, then you will here have such a map. <coughs> and I did this with and without optics and measured the two spectra, recalculated uh, the, the um, recalculated for the, or in other words, I, I calculated <coughs> the transmission in this way, from these two spectra, taking into account the two different connection angles. And so I could get for the lines that are in this specimen from manganese and what is the uh, zirconium and so on, these elements, I got these um, points of transmission. What you will see that for high um, energies, we are here in the range what is required, about 25%. Not so for the lower energies. Why is it? Must be so because it is a 10 square millimeter um, CD, and the output of the, the diameter of the output diameter of the lens is much larger. So, and especially the low energy photons will um, transmit it in the stronger curved capillaries. Whereas it, for high energy photons, uh, the total reflection is not given in this outer uh, capillaries. And so, several, I measure uh, a too low transmission. So what I need would be uh, 100 square millimeter STD. That would be fine, but unfortunately I have it. So, <coughs> finally, uh, I would uh, give you a recommendation for a performance check. Um, <coughs> has offered for some years a test material uh, <coughs> with these five elements in a thick layer. It can be uh, considered more or less as a bulk material in terms of um, X-ray spectroscopy. Uh, because the TM001 is over, a new one now is, was prepared and offered. Uh, originally, uh, it is thought to <coughs> use this material for performance check of the EDS and because I think all you have an EDS too so I would <coughs> show only one transparency to this point <coughs> if you measure a 10 kV, 10 kV spectrum and load it into the software the software gives you immediately the resolution for the CK line for the manganese K alpha line it calculates uh, the uh, ratio of the L alpha and K alpha uh, line to check it. If you would have any contamination on, on your detector for a leak in the window or whatever it may be, though it uh, 
calculates also the width of the other lines and compares this uh, with the resolution that would be followed from the manganese K line. If the dots are in agreement with the blue line, that's okay. But often you see that here the, the measured lines are higher, that means you have an incomplete charge collection, or they are lower, that means there's some, uh, um, well, I would say, spectrum shaping uh, and, uh, and the tail or shelf correction and they are too strong. So you can learn a lot of things of your spectrometer and, and, and finally here you can see was the spectrometer calibration okay. So this uh, material with these five elements inside can be also used to uh, check the performance of uh, the WDS because you have for all the diffractor that are normally used in, in uh, such spectrometers, such as these multi-layers, uh, the TAP, PET, and lithium fluoride, there are always lines. You have for, the, in, in, for this diffractor, you have the zirconium and zeta line, you have here the uh, carbon K line, uh, manganese L line. Uh, for the TAP, you can use copper L alpha or aluminum K alpha. For the PAT, is zirconium L alpha. And uh, for lithium fluoride, you can manganese K alpha use copper K alpha. So, <coughs> and the good thing is it's more that you can have all these lines from a single specimen. And you have only one time to align the specimen in the correct height. Not different times for different elements uh, and this gives you an expression so you can if you do the same as I did uh, with the uh, optics in front of the Zilli you can uh, do with your spectrometer and here you see again that um, how the um, x-rays penetrate the optics that for high energy lines only the inner capillaries are used in fact. So it is a very small uh, area of acceptance. And for carbon here it is much higher. So unfortunately I think the most of you will not see uh, the bar here. So the, the number 286. It's about 500 microns. So. And you see if, um, that it could be critical in case of mapping of large uh, areas um, when you have high energy lines included. So be very careful when you do mapping with areas above 100 and 100 uh, microns. So it could be quite, the result could be quite crazy. So because uh, uh, the at the end, uh, in the outer range of such a, a large mapping field the transmission of the optics is quite different from that what is um, in the middle. So <coughs> that's what I said. Keeping in mind, keep in mind for uh, X-ray mapping, and, <coughs> and it is also so that of course the spectrometer alignment becomes more and more critical at higher photon energies. This, this spot size here. Also. The depth of the focus, I would say, is uh, much closer here than, for instance, for the carbon um, K alpha line. <coughs> so, <coughs> I <coughs> used uh, this uh, material also for a um, uh, check with the calibration of the uh, different diffractor elements are correct. I did it one time a month to be always sure that my spectrometer is okay when a customer comes and say, please, we want to have a WDS analysis. <coughs> thank you for your attention, and I would also to thank my colleagues uh, from IFG and from BAM.